Now, for just a minute, I want you to think back to our day. I met a man who got what he wanted. Uh, Bonnie and I were starting out in ministry, and our first senior pastorate was in an idyllic New England community, and it was, it was amazing. It was in Rhode Island. It was a church was called Quidnesset, named after one of the uh, Native American tribes in the area. The whole area was. And this guy, everybody knew him in town. He had the ultimate male physique. I mean, you've heard of the six-pack? He had a 24-pack, you know? He was a special forces, decorated U.S. military guy who was a high, I don't know what black belt he was on, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth degree, I don't know how high it goes, but he had all those degrees. Total V-shape, you know, went down to a waist about this big around. He would walk around our town rippling his muscles with two 10-pound weights. He could swing them all day long. It, it really, he was so strong, he didn't seem to feel it. And the way we could see his muscles is you couldn't get a shirt on this guy. You know, if you have really muscles and everything, you, you, you lose your shirt somehow, always have it off. So he would walk around, and what he'd do on Sunday, while all the, the very uh, conservative New Englanders are dressed to the hilt going into church, he would prance through our parking lot, and by the way, not only no shirt, his shorts were way too short for men's shorts, you know, way too short. And, and all he wore was sweat, and he just would go like that. So this guy was the ultimate, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was Mr. Universe. He had any girl he wanted. He, I met him, uh, led him to the Lord, and he told me, he says, oh man, before I was saved, he said, I love to pick fights. He said, I'd go to the local bar, pick the prettiest girl sitting up at the bar, and I would just shove the guy out of his seat that was sitting. He said, I would watch long enough till I knew which one she was with. And he said, I'd knock him right out of his seat and turn and just start, you know, trying to get her. And the guy would push me. And he said, in Rhode Island, if they start it, I can finish it. And he said, I finished every one of them off. He said, I could knock most of them out with one punch. And he said, he told me with a big smile, he says, and I always got the girl. <laughs> and then he went like that. Because what he told me is, he said he had the perfect physical body, he had the perfect physique, he had the perfect career, all the awards, all the high levels of martial arts. Every woman, he said, he ever wanted, he got. And life was empty. Did you know God said, if you get what you really want, you won't be happy? Because there is a God-shaped, you've probably heard this, vacuum inside of us that only God can fill. He's the only source of joy and peace and happiness and fulfillment. So, Mr. Power Walker, uh, we all watched, walked all the time. One day I was studying the Bible, getting ready for Wednesday night. I heard a sound out and kind of bumping and everything, and I thought, what's going on? And heard voices, so I went. And as I went to open my door, there Mr. Drippy Sweat was, and my secretary, who was about 87 years old, Kay was her name, she was only about this high, and she was very proper, and you couldn't see me when I was studying, because she would say, you have to have an appointment, and she didn't want to touch him, so she was going like this, you know, blocking my door, keeping Mr. Atlas from coming in. And I said, Kay, it's okay. He, and he said, yeah, Father, I want to talk to you. And see, he thought I was Roman Catholic. He called me Father. And so, little pants, covered with sweat, set his weights down, and he came in. And Kay said, will you be okay? I said, I'll be okay. He shut the door. He said, I'd like to know one thing. I said, what? He said, I walked through your church parking lot. I said, I know. People tell me I've seen you. You're hard to miss. He said, do you know why I walked through your parking lot? I said, no. He said, because I feel something here. I feel something. I'm, I'm missing. He said, there is a peace here. He said, there's there's this serenity in your parking lot. What is it all of you have at this church, Father? Well, I just started sharing the gospel with him. And, and you know, I had the Romans Road marked, and so I went through the Romans Road and went through each of the points, and then I, I looked up for the first one, and I said, and, and he wasn't there. You know, and I, I had held my Bible up, and he had been right there, and I was looking down reading it, and I looked up and he wasn't there, and then I moved my Bible and I looked. He had gotten down on his knees, his forehead was on the floor, and you know what he said to me? He said, 
I want it. I said, you want what? He said, I want that. I want salvation. So I said, okay. So I got down on the floor with him, and I finished the Romans road, led him to the Lord, gave him his own copy of the New Testament, and I told him he needed to start reading it. And he came on Sunday to church, first time I ever saw him wearing clothes, with his little paperback New Testament, and he went like this. Father, still called me father. Hard to break that tradition. He said, I found myself in the Bible. And this is what he read to me. And this is what he read at his baptismal testimony. For we ourselves also were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But then the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. He said, I found myself. That was me. When he gave his testimony in the waters of baptism, I mean, it, it, it absolutely stunned our church. You know why? They looked at him as stay as far away from him as possible. He's an exhibitionist, he's sweaty, show off, immoral probably, proud. Yeah. Get out of our parking lot. You know what he was? He got what he wanted, found it was empty, and had to come to us because he wanted to know what we had that he didn't have. See, that's, that's the amazing thing of the gospel that you and I are supposed to be dispensing. By the way, when I discipled him, I used, you guys ever seen John Piper's anthem, A-N-T-H-E-M? You know, John Piper, the guy on uh, the internet, uh, wrote a lot of books. Because, you know, you have to learn how to avoid. I mean, he was Mr. Barr, Mr. Immorality, Mr. Everything. And I just went through, I said, okay, uh, you need to avoid the sights and situations that arouse your unfitting desires. Those are, those are Piper's words. Basically, what I told him is you shouldn't go back to the bars looking for pretty girls. He says, oh, I already know that. By the way, he married one of the quietest little, just very gentle, quiet opposite of a bar girl that was in our choir. I mean, it's amazing when the Lord changed him. He completely changed him, and he just married this lovely lady that was so antithetical, opposite of everything he had wanted before. Say no to every lustful thought within five seconds. Turn your mind forcefully toward Christ and say, you're more satisfying than my lust. Hold the promise and pleasure of Christ. That's uh, Piper's amazing words. Firmly in your mind till it pushes other images out. I told him, I said, if you don't understand what that means, you ought to memorize a verse and keep saying that verse and claiming it. Enjoy a superior satisfaction. In other words, say, Christ, I believe and trust you. You're more than this desire. And then move into something useful. In other words, don't stay there. Uh, be like Joseph, run from the room. 